Well, y'all may as well come on in with me. So, what y'all are about to see is kind of like one of those movies that you watch where it starts out in the present, and then it takes you back into the past, bringing you up to date on the present. That's what you're about to see. So let me get you going here. My youngest son and I, Evan, ended up taking a kind of sporadic, impromptu kind of vacation with my wife. My wife is a volleyball coach for a club volleyball team that travels around the United States a lot. And not way to California or nothing like that, but out of state nevertheless. Uh, they've been Florida, Kentucky, you know, those kind of places. Things. Well, she had one that came up where my oldest son was supposed to have gone with her there, and his tournament was canceled, and he wound up local with his tournament, and hers wound up being in Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, Tennessee area. Being the exquisite and loving husband that I am, I wasn't going to let her drive up there by herself. That's a, for, from where we're at, it's a nine hour drive. So I knew she was going to be pretty beat up because uh, the drive was long, the mornings were early and the days were long, and I just didn't want her to try to chance that driving back by herself. So what happened, Evan and I said, well, hey, there's things up there. This is Pigeon Forge, uh, Gatlinburg, uh, Sevierville. It is a very touristy section of Tennessee and I mean it's it is like driving your vehicle through a theme park when you go down the main road there in Pigeon Forge now I didn't really get a whole lot of video of that because it's it's just that it's extremely touristy and you know you know what I'm talking about so we did get some things that were pretty interesting to us um, You'll see those things. Uh, I was going to tell you what they were, but I'll just let you see. You'll see what's, when I go to these kind of places, what interests me anyway. So anyway, that is what the next part of this video will be leading up to the present now and why Want to Go Fishing Headquarters looks like a tornado went through it. I'm not Ronnie Howard or anything. I'm just getting you up to speed. So enjoy. I'm sure I will. Or I already have, actually. Or did I? When I was there, did I? It was a long drive home last night. Anyway, enjoy the chaos. See you back here in just a little bit. necessarily one of my most favorite places in the world, at least not ours anyway. But we're not at home. No, no, Toto, we are not in Kansas. We're in Tennessee. Pigeon Forge to be exact. Let's go see if their Bass Pro Shops is any better than mine. my Bass Pro Shops can't do it. Or they have them, they just can't find them. Maybe it's because they're all here.
very important. We don't carry these at home. Can't find them. Struggle to get them. Whole section of them here. And I believe this is the Kodak area, is what they call it up here, of Pigeon Forge in Tennessee. Fast Pro Shops. This place rocks. This place has made up for mine. I feel better about that. through the Smoky Mountain National Park. Just wanted to get out this morning early and just see what's out here. Never been here, so this is all new to me. It's very National Parky. Lots of downhills, uphills, swervy roads, river running right next to the road. We are trying to find a place to fling a line. A lot of what I'm seeing out here is uh, where we're at right now anyway is your typical river along the edge of the road, some pull-offs and places to possibly trout fish. And uh, we're just trying to find the right spot. Now, that may take all day, I don't know. But let's just enjoy the ride for right now because this is where I cut my teeth, weaving on these old roads like this. So I'm gonna try to not make Evan poop his pants, but we're having fun right now. We'll see you somewhere fishing in just a little bit. So we found a place to fish. We're going to give it a try anyway. We're at the Douglas Dam. Okay. Water ain't up very high. Dam hasn't opened up in a while, or a week or so, according to the lady at the office. You have a campground that's just down to my right, your left. And then the entrance over here to my left where the dam actually is. And there's people over there fishing, but they're fishing from the top half of the dam kind of hanging over, you know, basically the type of fishing that you see at my around where I live all the time, which is just cast and sit. I'm not a cast and sit kind of guy. So we're gonna try to do what we can to not whack our heads on the back of this car, go down here on the bank. And we're gonna do like I do at the house. We're gonna throw some grubs. We're gonna throw some uh, little squirt head jigs and even the, um, Roadrunner jig. We're just see what happens. There were some boats out here in the water just a little bit ago, and I think they were crappie fishing, had the really long rods all fan tailed out all over the place. So we're going to do what we do see if we can catch some fish. I didn't see anybody catching anything out there, but you never know. Man. Different way of looking at things. Maybe we'll catch a couple things. We'll see you down there on the water edge in just a minute. We had no luck whatsoever at the Douglas Dam. 
I just, it's upsetting. It's a lot of water. Uh, it was very low. They did actually release the water while we were leaving, but it's frustrating. It's really frustrating to see all that water and not catch a fish. So with that being said, I'm just gonna go in the damn store and get us a couple of drinks. If you're okay with that. center of town and I mean the center of tourist activity right behind us we have a racetrack of some kind for golf carts and playing golf and all that we're right next to the highway it's really amusing to be honest with you and there's smallmouth all in this little right creek over here if you want to call it a creek you can call it what you want but we're going to go this way because it gets deeper and see what happens I gotta catch my first fish. I mean, we have had a terrible, terrible day of fishing. It's just everything is just nothing's hitting at all. Well, we just drove through two tsunamis and a Tennessee hurricane. Fishing just ain't happening today. It is nothing but thunderstorms up until about four o'clock this afternoon. Really sucks. I really wanted to catch my first Tennessee fish. We saw quite a few smallmouth. Look like they're on beds to me. They're just making circles, making laps, coming back, making circles, making laps. And they didn't care about anything you threw down there. So now we're on our way to the Russell Stover candy shop. We don't have one of them where I'm from. We just left uh, Dick Sporting Goods where they had a whole lot of stuff that I don't have at mine. And a, and a lot of that is like that around here. There's the Bass Pro Shops, the Walmart, the uh, Dick Sporting Goods. They all have stuff our stores do not have and that I use where I'm at catching fish. I really wish there was some kind of something I could do to change that and make a difference and call some of these places but they've got it set up the way they've got it set up and probably not going to do anything just for me but anyway off to Russell Stover's and look at the candy buy some candy everybody needs candy I mean wouldn't make it if it wasn't necessary to have This is the sugar-free section. I don't know what I'm staring at this one. Two for ninety dollars. So for ninety dollars, you can either end up with diabetes or weighing about forty-five pounds more than you did before you came here. Coconut cream eggs, man. I love these things, and they're were 79 cents now they're 39 cents so i've got to get a few of these guys my wife and i love these so wait a minute this is not gonna let's just do this the easy way what do you say this is the best room full of leftovers I've ever seen in my life. You can open a refrigerator door and refrigerator all day long, but you're not going to find this. This is the kind of leftovers that you want to see. Valentine's Day is over here. Christmas over here. Just went through the Easter section out front. This is just, I love this. So was that not gratifying or what? Do you feel like you went with me on that trip? It was a trip, let me tell you.
So what I want to do now is I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we bought and why, you know, I picked this stuff up. And mainly it's because it's things that I use, but for whatever reason, locally, my stores, uh, whether it's Dick Sporting Goods or Bass Pro Shops or Walmart, whoever, doesn't carry these things. I have to order all this stuff, usually online. Um, and it's kind of sad that you have to do that, but it, they stock their shelves according to area. Now, we have a lot of lakes and ponds and things around here, which is kind of funny to me that we don't stock a lot more of the trout magnet or uh, crappie magnet, roadrunner, uh, bobby garland, stuff like that, that we don't have more of an abundance of that. But I am a saltwater area where I live. So I think a lot more of that happens than the freshwater, and that's just why it, it works that way. So we're going to go down here and take a little look at what I bought and why I bought it, where it came from. And just this short, this is going to be short and sweet. And then uh, I think there's a good possibility we may have to throw some of this stuff on the monkey, test out the new ba uh, box, the new milk crate slash luggage fishing device carry. I really need to have an acronym for that thing or something that's a lot better than just that. But uh, we'll come up with something. I'm sure I will. So let's take a look at some of the stuff I bought and why I bought it. Okay, some of this stuff is going to be extremely obvious uh, why I bought it, and some of it is going to be um, necessity just because, uh, like I said before, uh, we don't get it around here. It, it, you have to order it. You usually have to order everything. Now, we'll go with Russell Stover's first. I mean, that's obvious. That's one of the obvious why I bought it. Yes, I did buy the whole box. Uh, they were 39 cent a piece and there's 36 of them in there and you can do the math if you want to and I bought those because those my wife loves these pecan caramel slash turtle kind of things and I figured it would make her smile uh, to have those when I dropped the bomb on buying all of those so anyway you know I just kind of you're throwing that steak right out in front of the tiger there to kind of take their mind off of the eating you basically how that works so anyway let's take a look here now this this was the very first uh store we went in which was obviously the bass pro shops there in what they call kodak okay that's that was the area which is severeville uh that area pigeon forge okay great bass pro shops it really renewed my faith in bass pro shops um Unfortunately, it's just where I live that that's just not the greatest one going. Uh, the one in Kodak, I did find out, is the third third largest Bass Pro Shops that there is. That's pretty neat to know. And it was a very cool place. It was very big uh, and had just about anything and everything you could possibly want. They had an abundance of fishing reels. They weren't sold out of hardly anything. So anyway, let's talk about these right here. This is 1 16th ounce. Uh, comes with 11 in here, quantity of 11. And these were $10 and something a piece, and ten forty nine dollars or something like that. But I got two 1 16ths, and I also grabbed, which I've never really used, a 1 32nd uh, with a smaller blade. Just want to give that a try. That's that's something new to me. Uh, really didn't even know that size existed. And obviously, crappie sliders. And this is in my favorite here. This is the uh, the smoke with glitter. I, for whatever reason, our Bass Pro Shops used to carry them and have them on the shelf. My Bass Pro Shops also said that they had them on six packs of them and nobody can find them. So there, there you go. Um, I also picked up these. Now we don't have these around here anywhere. These are the crappie magnets. Usually I'm dealing with trout magnets and, and a lot smaller bait. This is actually uh, 15 pieces. I forgot how much they were. I didn't care, wanted to try them. I liked this color. It's the type of color around here for me that tends to work pretty well too. Is kind of a grayish bottom with a sparkle top. Um, I just wanted to give it a try. So that all came from the Bass Pro. That was just what I wanted to pick up from the Bass Pro shops. Um, let's move over here to Dick's Sporting Goods. All right. I went into Dick's Sporting Goods and found another. I can't remember which one now. Uh, I think these two came from Dick's Sporting Goods. And these were two more of the crappie style. Now this is as close to the smoke with sparkle that I could get. And they were, like I said, they're just a larger uh, trout magnet. Got a couple more colors there. These two came from there. 
This is a size that I normally cannot find. Here, I can always find the 164th ounce, but these are actually 132nds, and I don't, didn't want to go 116th with these. These are cut in a certain way, and they fall a certain way, and I got some of the larger ones, and they fall just a little too fast for me. So I wanted to go with a 132nd, as opposed to that 164th really small, and then you go up to the 116th ounce, which actually has a longer body. But I wanted these, and I wanted them in silver, and the Dick Sporting Goods had them on the shelf. I grabbed the four that they had, and there you go. That's why we got those. Enough said there. Now, we did go into the world's biggest knife store. Couldn't resist that. That place rocked. Got me a couple of small sharpeners, which are really good to keep in your pocket. Uh, the gentleman that was there suggested these. I let him sharpen my knife that was on my side at the time. And it was only two bucks for him to put it on the thing there and sharpen it. And I can't get there it goes, it comes out. But he suggested these are the ones that he keeps himself in his car, in his pocket. You have a nice rough edge on this side. Then you have a, let's just see what it, uh, 600 grit and ceramic rods there you go smoky mountain knife works that is the name of the place the smoky mountain knife works if you get a chance go in there you will like that place if you like knives and you're into that sort of thing my god man the knives are everywhere so also swiss army all right i think it's it, that the swiss army knife is a lot of times overlooked i have had this guy and i've had a couple of others and i still have them they're upstairs but i've had this big guy here for a long time i mean so long that you know, the emblem fell off and it is the real Swiss Army knife. It's not one of the generic whatevers that you find elsewhere. Everything from, you know, magnifying glasses to Phillips head screwdrivers. I've had it a very long time, but I usually carried it in my pocket and it has fallen on occasions and I've knocked chunks out of it and a little bit of everything. Um, but I think this guy is overlooked a lot of times and the reason he's overlooked is because he doesn't have a pair of pliers and all that kind of mess and it is a little bit of a chunk to carry. But I can't tell you how many times I have taken a hook out of a fish with that guy right there. Because when you're lipping him, you literally can push that right down in there and catch that hook with that little V and take that hook right out of there. So it's not always you know, necessity to have a pair of pliers and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, carrying that in your pocket, <laughs> that, that's, that's a whole lot of stuff to carry in your pocket right there. Well, little did I know, now, I don't know if I have ever said that right. Vic, Victor, Victor Inox. Victor Inox? Vic, Victor Inox? Vic, I don't know who Victor is, but he's evidently a member of the Swiss Army. And uh, he's a cool dude. They had these little leather knife pouches that are made just by them, for them. And I'm going to tell you what. The little girl I talked to in there that showed me this stuff. I, she was as nice as she could be. This thing was like 13 bucks. It's all leather. It's not generic and cheesy. It is all leather, 13 bucks. So I went ahead and got that. And now I am gonna carry that on my side a little more often than I do the old uh, Leatherman or the Leather Gerberman as we like to call it. So anyway, there's the things that we bought. We are gonna go out now, quite possibly, get set up and head out to the water do some fishing and see what we can catch with some of this stuff right here. See if, you know, my purchases were worthy. So we've made it. We're gonna give a few things a try here real quick. We're gonna go with that silver sparkle, well, smoke and sparkle, I guess you'd say. Uh, who makes these things? Charlie Brewer, yeah. I almost wanted to say Bobby Garland. 
There's too many people that name their stuff after themselves, and then I gotta remember who they are. But anyway, I'm also trying the small, let me see if I can show here, 132nd Roadrunner jig. I've never used one that small with that small spinner. We're gonna try it now, see what happens. And there you have it. Nice crappie. Look at that big beautiful guy. Nice fish. Bluegill. Bluegill. Another nice crappie. Hey, guy. Bluegill, big bluegill. Big fat boy, I mean, look at that guy. Easily as big as my hand. I'm not kidding people, why aren't we feeding the hungry with these flying bagpipes? I don't understand. Got a bass in the grass. Not a bad fish either. And that's on a 132nd ounce jig. Okay. When you're hungry, you're hungry. Don't know if you can see him or not. Anyway. Bedding right at the foot of the deck here. Well, there y'all go. Hope you've enjoyed this little mini movie. I've enjoyed it. I had a good time. I'm tired though, I'll be honest with you. That was a long drive. Sleeping somewhere else, not in your own bed and all that. It just beat you up. But anyway, we came out here and we caught some fish. And the Charlie Brewer black, or I'm sorry, smoke with silver sparkle using a 132nd ounce jig by Roadrunner caught everything you saw. Bluegill, crappie, and that one big old bass over there. But the bass are on the beds, so they're gonna be a little bit hard to get a hold of anyway, but that's okay, we caught fish. We also got to see that the uh, huh, little the monkey's fishing basket back here is working out, doing what it should do. We did okay. I have other ideas for the basket. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm just going to make hand gestures and let you see if you can figure it out what I'm doing. But I got ideas. I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to get online today with old Amazon and see if I can't figure out what I want to do. Hope you enjoyed the trip. If you enjoyed watching, please go ahead and subscribe. What do you got to lose? You can always unsubscribe. That's so easy. It's not like uh, you join the gym or anything. I'm not gonna hassle you, as far as you know. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. I enjoyed this trip. I enjoyed everything we did. Had a great time. Learned a lot. That's the key, learning things. See you next time.